another technology, mobile internet. And that's already disrupting a lot of things. Buses, trains, cars, rides, parking. This is actually my uh, iPhone. That's actually a picture of my iPhone. I actually don't own a car. Uh, so I, you know, I talk about this because I, I use it. Pay uh, parking, I love this. I love to pay parking with my cell phone. I don't carry coins anymore. This is awesome, right? Thank you, city of San Francisco, and thank you, Stanford. Um, it, it so beats carrying coins. And from a city perspective, it's also great because um, you know you can. Um, it's convenient. It works with tolling and, and parking also. Um, and you know, in real time, you can price it in real time. It's just uh, so it's changing parking, right? Um, user generated traffic data. So every time we use Google Maps or Apple Maps or whatever, we're actually sending data, location data, movement data, all kinds of data to Google or Apple. And they're collecting millions and billions of data points and they know more than pretty much anyone else what's going on in traffic. On top of that, uh, you may know a company called Waze uh, so it's not just that, that they're collecting Google, uh, they just got acquired by Google, by the way, a few months ago. Um, in 2012, this company, so Waze is what's called social, uh, social mapping, social traffic. People actually uh, send messages to one another and say, hey, there's traffic here, you should go around, and so on and so forth. In 2012, 36 million Waze users uh, made 500 million map edits. In some cities with like horrible traffic, Waze is a must, must. Um, I mean, I've been overseas and in Sao Paulo, Brazil, everyone who drives has Waze. In Istanbul, Turkey, everyone has Waze. That's because they're telling one another uh, what to do. And of course, this is getting Google more, even more data where the gasoline is cheap, where the traffic is, where the alerts are, all that stuff. So user-generated data. Car sharing. I drove here today with a zip car. I've been a zip car member for seven years plus, right? That's my main mode of transportation. This is called car sharing. And I'm not the only one. They have probably, they may be up to a million now, but certainly 800,000 members. Um, and, and here's the, the thing about, so I rent it by the hour or by the day, it depends on what I need, today by the hour, sometimes when I go to Stanford by the day. Um, but here's the interesting thing in terms of transportation. Each uh, zip car serves 15 people. That's the uh, own to, to the share to own ratio. Meaning that 15 of us would have owned the car if we hadn't been members of a zip car. 15 to one, that's, that's pretty good. So 10,000 zip cars are out there instead of 150,000 that if we had all chosen to drive a car. Um, and that changes a lot of things about the ownership, uh, the concept of car ownership. And, and anyone who uses Airbnb or, or uh, Basically, the, the, the concept of ownership is changing, not just in transportation in general. Ride sharing. So Uber, companies like Uber or Lyft or uh, Sidecar, basically these are competing with taxis. So there's a lot of spare capacity out there. People, uh, we only use our cars two hours a day. Cars are the second biggest capital investment that we make. We Americans, 40, 50, 60 grand, or maybe even more over four years, and yet they're parked 90% of the time. So isn't there a better way to use this spare capacity? And so companies like Lyft and so on, they're using it. Um, and in doing that, so, so to give you one idea, Uber, which is a company in San Francisco, and it's all based on an app. They have an app, you call Uber, or you click, and a car is basically tells you, I'll take you for 50 bucks or 100 bucks or whatever. Um, 
and I'll be there in five minutes, all with this mobile internet and cell phone. Um, last year, they were, Uber was started in 2009. Last year, they collected a billion dollars. They made 20%, so they made $200 million, okay? Uh, in less than four years, from idea to 200 million, and they're growing like crazy. They're already in 60 cities, and Google, again, invested $250 million into Uber. And it will be clear in a second, in a few minutes, why. Uh, so mobile internet, smartphones are changing transportation in meaningful ways. They're, they're, they're helping users connect, they're helping users generate data, um, and also they're enabling new business models like Zipcar and, 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 and Uber um, that use some of the spare capacity and make car ownership uh, uh, maybe obsolete even. And the taxi industry is being disrupted as we speak. In the city in San Francisco, I mean, they're like, uh, if they don't do really heavy lifting and develop their own apps and so on, they're, they're gonna be obsolete pretty soon. Um, so let me talk about sense.